garden vastu with flowers and fountains. Examples of peace colonies and vastu housing developments. This is a schematic layout of a peace colony with 50 fortune creating marble homes, each located on a lot of about 10,000 square feet or 1,000 square meters. All roads are aligned east-west, north-south, and the main gate is in the east. The central park has a celebration ground, peace palace, and Vedic gardens. All homes have an auspicious eastern entrance. Also included are a health center and commercial building, and schools for boys and girls with playgrounds. The natural beauty is enhanced by auspicious lakes in the east with decorative gardens. The minimum land requirement is 10 hectares or 25 acres. If lakes and a forest buffer are included, then 15 hectares or 37 acres would be more appropriate. This is a similar but much smaller example of a six acre development with 16 homes. Wherever possible, the community is surrounded and protected by evergreen hedges and rows of beautiful trees. Only non-polluting electric or hybrid cars will be allowed inside the development. This 40 acre or 16 hectare example has about 90 houses of four different sizes and types. One-story cottages, two-story villas, patio homes, and large mansions. It also features beautiful gardens and playgrounds, and a central clubhouse with Mahashi Spa and optional apartment buildings. So everyone should be living in the building with an ideal vastu and the, the proportions, the dimensions, the placement and the positioning they are all determined by the rules of Stapatya Ved but the style and the feeling of the building that could vary according to the culture and the climate and the local taste as well. Now the whole world should be reconstructed according to the vast to city planning and the global country planning according to the principles of Marshi Stapatyavet or Vast to Vidya. So in the city plan all the roads should be aligned east, west and north, south and uh, that makes it being designed on a grid around a central square so that automatically all the proper lots are being created in the cardinal directions and then the houses can maintain inside and outside this perfect value of orientation which is so beneficial for the inhabitants because it is that which is sets their brain functioning right. Whenever one is facing towards the east there is a particular firing pattern of the neurons in the brain other than when one is facing south or west or in the intermediate directions and that is a very important feature of the holistic functioning of the entire physiology. Doctors practicing Maharshi's Vedic health care routinely ask their patients about the orientation of their homes and in which direction they sleep or work. Because as the Vedic texts say, one should not even live one day in a building that is not according to Vastu. A study published in the Journal of Social Behavior and Personality regarding the effects of orientation of houses found that there were 75% more burglaries in homes with south entrances compared to homes with north, east, or west entrances. A research project conducted by a cardiologist in California revealed that 50% of his heart patients 
lived in homes with south entrances. A self-reporting study measured improvement in the well-being of people who live or work in buildings built according to the principles of Maharshi Stapachaved. Subjects reported significant improvement in all the following categories. General well-being, quality of sleep, energy and relaxation levels, dietary habits, happiness, mental clarity, and efficiency. A study published in the Journal of Affective Disorders reports that comparing inpatients assigned to rooms with eastern or western windows, those exposed to the eastern light had a mean of 3.67 days shorter hospital stay than patients in western rooms. Now in modern architecture and planning in all the modern cities this value of orientation is, is not there. If we analyze any existing modern city, any contemporary city, the buildings are facing in, in any random directions because the roads are uh, according to a chaotic uh, pattern. So we can take an example of the chaotic city planning of London. London is bisected by a big river, the Thames River, and all the roads, they have grown, the city has grown over so many hundreds of years, so it is, they are all in a crisscross pattern, and the main areas, as it happens, of the financial district of the, the Bank of England and the Stock Exchange, the Royal Stock Exchange, they're all inauspiciously placed with this big river in the south and that is uh, having the kind of a destructive influence on the financial market of London which used to be the largest financial market in the world. Similarly we may <coughs> we can look at the reconstruction of the city of Paris. On one side we can see the, the existing old layout of Paris with the chaotic road pattern. And then on the other side, comparing it, we see the new ideal city planning mm. with all the roads properly laid out and then avoiding the inauspicious areas because also Paris is bisected by a river. So one side of the river is auspicious and that's where the main uh, administration and the main part of the city should be. And then on the other side, a large area along the inauspicious side should be remaining as unconstructed in terms of parks and gardens. And in Paris also, we can see that the, the palace of the king, the Louvre, is very inauspiciously placed. And that is ha they were never happy there. And, and that's also why they moved out to Versailles. So that place is also confirmed not an auspicious place in the city of Paris. When we look at the layout of the city of New York, then we see that the main part, Manhattan, is although apparently on a very orderly grid, but that whole grid is rotated about 28 <coughs> degrees. So in the whole part of Manhattan, there are no buildings properly oriented. It's very difficult if not impossible to find properly oriented buildings. And in addition, the financial district, which is on the southern tip of the peninsula of Manhattan, is very inauspiciously influenced by the big Hudson River on the western side and the big water body on the southern side, which is also contributing to the uh, violent fluctuations of the stock market, which is uh, badly affecting the health of so many people. In the same way we can consider the uh, city layout of the city of Rome when we see on one side the old city, the old layout, the chaotic city planning of the city of Rome and on the other side the reconstructed area, the ideal city planning of, of Rome. 